everyone and welcome to chapter 5, still part 1, on mitosis. Now in the previous video, we have done some introduction about cell division as well as interface. Now we're ready to go into mitosis. Now mitosis has four different phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And it looks like this under the microscope. This is prophase right here. This is metaphase. Looks absolutely crazy and beautiful at the same time, isn't it? This is anaphase and this is telophase. You will need to know how to describe each and every phase and be able to recognize it under the microscope. Now, people find it a little bit difficult to memorize these phases. So people usually use an acronym. Um, you can use PMAT, and that should help you memorize it in order. PMAT right here. Now, just also another side note. Kilo actually means N. So this is the last phase, kilo phase, N phase. Um, and pro phase, pro, actually has the meaning of first. Okay, so prophase is the first phase and telophase is the last phase. Okay, before you talk about prophase though, we need to really look at uh, the interface cell. And you can see here how the chromatin is not yet condensed and they are not visible on a light microscope. However, what happens during prophase is that the chromatin condenses. So condensation of chromatin occurs and the chromosomes become shorter and thicker and they appear under the light microscope and it's visible as two sister chromatids. Okay, they have sister chromatids, it's like in a butterfly shape, that's what it means. Now, other than that, the centrosomes move to opposite poles and centrosomes are actually involved in organizing spindle fibers. So these points are in the wrong orientation. But yeah, those spindle fibers form and they attach to the centromere of prophase. Well, they start attaching. It's kind of a process, right? Just imagine them moving around, they come condensing. It's a process. It's not a static phase. Um, just a note as well, um, when we say different poles, opposite poles, we really mean opposite poles in that specific two words. Uh, poles is specific terminology here. You cannot use the word ends or sides of the cell. You must use the word poles when it comes to mitosis. So centrals are moving to opposite poles and they are not reached yet at prophase. Now what also happens is that nuclear envelopes breaks down and nucleolus breaks down. So basically the entire nucleus disassembles and the whole cell just focuses on doing cell division. Um, the chromosomes can be in the cytoplasm as well. You can see on the cell like this, you can see that uh, this is the cell during prophase there is no nucleus surrounding those chromosomes anymore. And the chromosomes, instead of like just the nucleus, which used to be like a, just a really dark colored, you know, circle thing, now they look like noodles under this light microscope. And this is because, well, condensation of chromatin occurred and they become more condensed and therefore. Uh, more bold and are able you are able to see them under the microscope yeah and they do fill the cytoplasm with that okay so again this is not a static thing it's moving and um therefore when metaphase occurs they move to a certain stage so what where did they move to so central zones which were previously moving now have reached the opposite poles. They are definitely there already. Just now it's just moving. The spindle fibers which were forming are now fully formed at metaphase. And those chromosomes that were condensing just now and you know were attached attach at the centromere, right? Now they are pulled into position and they are lining up at the metaphase plate. Or equator. I do prefer the term metaphase plate because that helps me remember that metaphase plate, well, where it 
happens during metaphase, right? Chromosomes line up at the metaphase plate during metaphase. That's like a very instant connection. But equator means the same thing, if you wish. You can see them line up like this, and you can also see that um, the chromosomes are attached to spindle fibers at the central near as well. And now the spindle fibers are definitely fully formed. Um, just now it's just forming. Now it's fully attached, fully formed. Now there's a new word here that we I've included in a slide, but it's not usually used. But just in case you see it, that word is kinetochord. We say that the chromosomes are attached to the spindle fibers at kinetochord core as well. Why? Because kinetochord core is actually a protein structure at which the spindle attaches to. Think of kinetochord core as like an adapter. So there's the centromere there, kinetochord core is like the adapter, and spindle fibers kind of plug in to the kinetochord core, right? So kinetochord core is like a little plug for the spindle fibers to attach to. So yeah, you might see that word sometimes, quite right. Anyways, this is how the cell kind of looks like under the microscope. You can see that it's no longer just a ball of noodles like prophase just now. Those chromosomes are lined up at the metaphase plate and it doesn't look quite neat, but it's aligned. Okay, it's quite a packed line. They are quite squished together at the metaphase plate, giving it this appearance. Moving on to anaphase, which is our third stage of mitosis. Anaphase is where things get completely crazy and interesting. Well, to me, I love anaphase. They're great. Now, what happens during anaphase? Centromere of each chromosome divides. These two words are important. It doesn't break, it doesn't replicate, right? Centromere divides, right? So one centromere becomes two. Pretty much one, two, right? This used to be one chromosome, now it's two. And uh, what happens is the sister chromatids, so this two, which, are, which were one chromosome just now, split at the centromere and they get pulled to opposite poles. Now, this is because the spindle microtubules actually shorten. Okay, and therefore when things shorten, it gets pulled. And if you can see, if you if you observe carefully, you will realize that the central mirrors are leading towards the pole. So this part is closest to the centrosome. So it's in this direction, and this one is pulled in this direction. It's like a little arrow as well. And that's because, well, the spindle fibers is attached at the centromere. So if you uh, pull that part, obviously that part is going to move forward first, right? Inertia and stuff. So that's why it's in this particular direction. If they ever ask you to draw the cell in anaphase, your chromosomes should be facing the right direction, bending in the right direction like this, not like how do you do that? Like this. Like should be like this, pointing outwards. All right. So that is anaphase. So they get they are pulled to opposite poles. Uh, again, it's not a static phase. It's a process. So it's pulling. And at telophase, we say that the chromatids have reached the poles. When it reached the poles, okay, the chromosomes start to decondense. So it returns to long and thin formation and become what we call as chromatin, right? They exist in the form of chromatin now. The nucleus reforms, the nuclear envelope resembles, and the spindle fibers break down. Basically, telophase is everything opposite of prophase. <laughs> it's like ending the uh, process. Okay. Right at the end of telophase, cytokinesis start. So it's not exactly two cells yet until cytokinesis starts. What is cytokinesis? We'll talk about that later. Cytokinesis is the division of the cell cytoplasm. So two, the two nucleus are formed first through the process of mitosis. So there's nuclear division. And then cytokinesis. Kinesis kind of finishes the deal by dividing the cytoplasm as well. 
This happens differently in animal cells and in plant cells. In animal cells, the cell membrane are drawn together and this is by a contractile ring of microfilaments. Basically, it's something like the cytoskeleton. Okay, the cell membrane is drawn together and this forms what we call the cleavage furrow. You can see here, this is a scanning electron micrograph because it has a 3D appearance. And you can see there is a cleavage furrow forming right here. You can, if you can see, there is a contractile ring drawn vaguely in the diagram. And this uh, continues to contract. Okay, and eventually the cell membrane fuses, so this becomes smaller and smaller, and it just pinches it off. Uh, this part of cell membrane fuses with this part of the cell membrane, and they become separate cells. Ta-da! Now this becomes more complicated in uh, plant cells though. Because plant cells, as you know, have a cell wall, so they cannot form a cleavage furrow like that. So instead, in plant cells, vesicles are transported to the equator, and you can see it here. Vesicles transported to the equator, forming the cell plate. So many of them come together and they fuse together, right, to form the cell plate, and this eventually forms the new cell wall. So by the formation of new cell wall, cytoplasm will be divided into two. So no, no cleavage furrow here, no contractile ring here. Just vesicles, cell plate, cell wall. And ta-da! The organelles are shed out, and therefore you have two new cells. Ding. Now, as I said just now, you do need to be able to identify these cells in sorry, under the microscopes. So this is a root onion root tip cells, and these are broad brain root tip cells. And you can look at them, they're beautiful. Uh, and you can try to identify each of the stages in this diagram. We'll be doing some exercises as well. Now, um, usually, okay, when it comes to root tip cells, uh, we take this kind of slides from this area, this is the zone of cell division. This is where we've discovered the most ac active mitosis to be. And most of the slides that they show you and like, and like, you know, um, sh like pictures they show you in the questions, these are usually root tip cells from this zone of cell division. Most actively dividing. So yeah, don't forget to complete the quiz as it is evidence of you watching this video. Um, there will be more answers to these questions there. I hope it's clear. If nothing, if something is not clear, feel free to message me. And that's it for now. See you soon. Bye.